With the rapid pace of AI innovation, it is tough to keep up. You have probably wondered, is there a single place where I can find the latest AI breakthroughs? And not just information, but also like actual models, data sets, and a place where I can also really play with the demos and truly understand it. And if I like any of these models, can I also download it and use it offline? Is there a place like that? The answer is yes. It's called Hugging Face, and it's essential for everyone to know about it in 2025. In this video, I'll provide a detailed tour of Hugging Face. Consider it as a marketplace or an app store for the entire AI ecosystem. It is the platform where the future of AI is revealed, and today I'm offering you a backstage pass. So what is Hugging Face? At its core, it's a massive ecosystem built on three things, models, datasets, and my favorite part, spaces. If you look at the landing page, you can clearly see those are the three things which are over here. One is the models, spaces, and datasets. You can see that there are more than 1 million models available, more than 250K datasets available, and 4,000 different applications. Let's look at each one of these one by one and try to understand what this is all about. So let's look at the models first. So as soon as I get in, it's very interesting to see that the total models are actually 1.8 million. And so these are all the models which organizations or individuals are making available for the open source community to go experiment and also download and use. So, you know, Im imagine if your technical team or you yourself are building, let's say, an image classification application, then you can come here and search for an image classification algorithm based on the tasks. So you can see on the left hand side, th these are all the different types of categories of models that are available. So you have multimodal, you have computer vision, you have natural language processing, you have audio, you have tabular, et cetera, right? So tomorrow, if you want to build something, you are able to simply come here and let's say you want to do a, an image text to image. So you click on this and then it will filter and show you all the text to images. The next one is data sets, which is even more interesting. For example, if you want to look at some, some of the most popular data sets, let's say that I want to have different types of model logos, right? As, and I want to make that available as part of whatever exercise that I'm doing. You can come here and simply download this. Now comes the most favorite part of mine, which is spaces is think of this as a way for the organizations who are building these models and making it available. These are the spaces that they always have the spaces of the week. And these are the trending spaces. So if I click on any one of these, I can see these are fully running demos that are available, which you can play with. For instance, here, if I upload any of my images, so for example, like if I upload this image of mine, so th what this will do is it could change the lighting so I can have, have different types of lighting. So sunrise in the mountain or early morning rays. And then if I run it, I should be able to see the result pretty quickly. So this allows you to basically play with the models themselves and play with the libraries and the package itself. And then you can see the results live. That way we are also satisfied. This is something you want to use or not, right? So we'll let it run for a few more seconds. Okay, there you go. So this is a beautiful representation. See, it has done a great job by changing my background. You can see like this is the before and after but this is fantastic. So that, that is just one of the spaces, but you can see there are a lot of other spaces available as well for you to use it. So these are the three aspects, if you will. We have the models, we have the data sets, we have the spaces. I really love the documentation from Hugging Face because this is where you can also go, go through different topics. And this is very cool for folks who are not very well versed with all the terminology and stuff like that. You can go into this documentation and get yourself familiarized with this. For example, this is PEFT, which is one of the industry well-known techniques to fine tune your model. So if you're not familiar with this, you can get into get inside this and read about it. So it's just a fantastic piece of information available right there on your fingertips. They also offer different tiers, just FII. So you can have a pro account, which will allow you to also run this, run some of these models in the infrastructure provided by Hugging Face. So there you go. So that's like a quick demonstration of what Hugging Face is all about. Okay, so playing with AI art and video generators is a ton of fun. But Hugging Face is also where the most important work in AI is happening. I'm talking about tools that solve real urgent problems. I want to show you two incredible demos 
from some of the open source models that tackle two of the biggest challenges in AI today, which is safety and authenticity. Welcome to Gemma. Gemma is Google's open source model. It is lightweight and state of the art, which you can go ahead and download. I'll make a separate video on the differences between Gemini and Gemma. But what I wanted to share with you guys today here is you can see, as I mentioned in the beginning of the discussion, that most of the companies who are releasing their open source models directly make them available on Hugging Face. So this is where they're talking about what this model is. They have two types of, within Gemma, they have two categories of models. If I click on any one of these, this is where they're directly asking us to download it from Hugging Face. On Hugging Face, I can click on the Google, Google as an organization and see what are the different types of models that are available. Okay, so you can already see that there are different Gemma models and there are other 39 different collections available as well. Now, what we're going to see is two different things, right? So if I just type Gemma 3N here, this kind of takes us through the Gemma card. So model cards are a great way for the organizations to explain what this model is all about. Now, what I want to do is I want to show you a quick demo of one of the really cool models, which, which is Shield Gemma. So Shield Gemma is, is a very strong multimodal model which is designed for safety when it comes to responsible AI. And it has this amazing ability to understand images and also allow you to upload your own set of policy documentation. So we'll see this in action. So what it does is here you can upload any particular image. Uh, so for example, here I'm uploading this image. This image is, is, as you can see, it's violent in nature. I've taken it from my video game. And this is an example of a policy, right? A any co content that has any kind of violence or dangerous or sexually explicit, what we're describing is the image should not contain anything around that. So this is our policy document. And when I hit on submit, what it does is it's going to produce a very simple yes or no input with the labels, right? So it says, yes, there is a dangerous content in this. No, there's no sexually explicit content. So th this is such a great demonstration of, of an example of what Google's model lo looks like from a responsible AI perspective. This is the second demo that I want to show you guys, which is how you can add watermarking to your content generated using something called a synth ID, which identifies AI generated content by embedding digital watermarks. This is something which our industry needs very badly. So let's say that I'm writing a prompt that, hey, go ahead and write an essay about my pets. So it will generate two output and one output will have some sort of watermark and the other output will have no watermark. So the idea is this is the output that is being generated. It's going to be very hard for human eye to understand, right? So I'm just going to take a wild guess and I'm going to say that, okay, this may be the watermark. But then this is where the library has a pre-built trained algorithm where they will be able to potentially provide which one of these are, are the right ones, right? So the one which has the word correct written is the one which is actually generated by AI. The rest of it is not, right? So this is like a cool one for you to be able to look at. In the next one, we will take it one notch up, which is I want to now download one of the models and make it available offline. So if I'm in a flight or if I'm going somewhere where I don't have internet connectivity, I still want to have a large language model available in my laptop. So maybe I could generate images if I'm working on any particular kind of project, right? So you can download that and then also fine tune it. Hugging Face is one great place where most of these open source models are available for you to download. What we want to look into it is an example of stable diffusion, which is one of the most famous image generation models and how we can download it on your laptop and actually run it offline without the internet. Okay, so let's get right into it. Okay, I'm back in Hugging Face and I'm gonna look for stable diffusion. So I'm gonna select this one in which is a bit of a smaller model. The key thing for you to note is whether this particular model requires a GPU to run or a TPU to run or a CPU to run. That means if your computer has a GPU or a TPU as part of your memory, then it should be, depending on the size of the model, you should be able to run that. But if your computer is like a normal computer, just like mine, I need a CPU based model so that I can download and run it. So the cool thing here is you can actually clone the repository directly. I'm actually going to take you through showcasing how you can clone. So you can copy this command, which is where it is saying, okay, git clone. And I'm going to go into my VS code, which is my IDE, where I will go ahead and, and do this. Okay. 
All right, now I'm in VS Code and I have copied that command. So I'm just gonna click on clone Git repository and hit enter. And what it does is it tells me to select a particular folder where I'm gonna copy this. So I'm just doing that right now. And it's cloning cloning that, that entire Git in, into that particular folder. Okay, so now it has downloaded the stable diffusion and I have this particular directory structure that you can see. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the readme file and you can see that it describes what is what this particular model can do so it talks about what is the model id what kind of prompt you can give etc right so what we need what we have to do here is once once we go through this we will then go to our terminal run the the particular python file right so in the python file it really tells that okay this is the particular model id that needs to be used you can describe the prompt over here so in this case maybe let me just say that astronaut riding in motorbike in space so let's see if it is able to do it and then i'm just going to run this particular so i'm going to save this obviously and then i'm going to run this run this particular file right this is running and utilizing the resources of my local computer so it's going to take a little bit more time than the usual and based on that it's going to it's going to generate the image once the image is generated it's going to store it as part of this particular folder structure uh, so we'll look into that, but for the moment, we're going to give it a little bit of a time. All right, so it has completed processing and it says that the image has been saved successfully to output image turbo. So let's look at it. And this is the image. It's the astronaut in the space, as I had mentioned. So there you have it. The beauty of this is you can run this in your local laptop without the requirement of an internet. And that's what we're trying to show about here, right? So of course there are like a lot of different image generation models available out there, but what if you really want to customize it, you know, do not want to connect to, to cloud and want to fine tune it using tools like Olama, et cetera, and make sure that th this is available in, this is your like personal large language model for you. So this is a great example that you're seeing on the screen. So this was it, our deep dive into hugging face. I hope you found it valuable. If you're interested in learning more about the differences between Google's Gemini and Gemma models, be sure to subscribe and watch my next video. Thanks for watching. Once again, I will see you next time.